Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. As you can see, I'm back. My back from my my little uh, sojourn. I'm here with uh, my usual partner in crime, the Exile Dub, who was also missing last week. He was swanning himself down in Galway, having a great old time with no work involved, I'm sure. And another person joining us was also down in Galway, Sarah Kinsler. Judging by your uh, social media presence through the week, Sarah, you had a great time down in Galway. I did indeed, uh, but to be honest, I really missed Shelburne on Saturday night. I think it was the first Champion Stakes final I've ever missed, uh, to be honest. So I was a little bit sad missing that, but I made up for it by going out dancing. So how bad? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. There was a few dogs dancing around Shelburne Park on Saturday night. Tommy, I think it's safe to say this was one of the special nights of the year at Shelburne Park. Unbelievable performances from start mm. to finish. Yeah, it reminds me of the week about three weeks ago, even when there were ridiculously good performances top to bottom with that type of card again. I don't know how it can keep producing that, but again, I suppose it highlights the quality, the depth of quality, not just the quality, but the depth of quality in the country at the moment. It's uh, it's fairly phenomenal stuff at the moment, and what a derby it tees up. Yeah, I, look, we'll get into the derby a little bit later on, um, Sarah. But the, as you said, the feature was very much the Boyle Sports Champion Stakes. €20,000 to the winner. 18 dogs went into it. Six dogs emerged for the final. And we had the sole classic winner in the final landing the spoils one time only. Tommy O'Donovan, no stranger to landing a big race. Um, he's becoming a bit of a, a master at it, getting them to, to produce in the big night and one time only. Now he's not just a Laurels winner, he's also a Champion Stakes winner. And he was a tremendous winner on the evening. He was, and it was a great result for us as well, obviously in the book as well. Damien Lonigan, I think, had two in a row as the favourite for a long time. But on the night, I think the money start coming for Sentimental Lad and a bit for one time only as well. But he just ran terrific. I had tipped him. I really, really fancied him. I couldn't believe he was three to one on the night. But Tommy O'Donovan, I'm like, he's he knows what he's doing. He's been around the world. He's travelled to Australia and all these places. He's seen it all. He's done it all. He's a remarkable background as well with his family and the Greyhounds. He's a tremendous young man with a dog and that dog just ran terrific on Saturday night. He had the perfect line on the fence. He took advantage of it after um, Droopy's nice one had gotten that lovely early start, which I didn't think she'd be able to do with the wides either side of her. And she proved me wrong and she will go far in the Derby as well, I think, but a terrific performance. That's over 56,000 one time only has won now. And to be honest with you, I have underestimated him a little bit. Anti-post, I wouldn't have picked him, but throughout the competition, I know there's only two rounds, but the fact that he came back from a break as well, I didn't think he would be able to do that. And when he ran in that open and semi-final, I says, Janie, he's, he goes well fresh. The break has obviously done him the world of good because I think during the Easter Cup, he didn't run great in one of the heats. He, he faded off the back and he looked like he had been carrying something maybe. And just to be able to do that with just two runs after a break is a remarkable training performance. And as well, two in a row ran a terrific race as well, not to take anything away from him. He was our, our once he was once the anti-post favourite for the Derby, remember as well, at about 12 to 1. And there's still a lot of anti-post support coming for him. But one time only as well, I was talking to Damien Lonigan this morning and he's trimmed him into 25 to 1 from 33 to 1 for the Board Sports Irish Greyhound Derby. Yeah, uh, one time only, Tommy. You know, you would have seen him first hand down at the Laurels, of course. Um, he was a dog that impressed us through that competition. I suppose he was a little bit overlooked coming into this because, as, as Sarah alluded to, he, he was relatively lightly raced. He, he ran so well in the early round of the um, Easter Cup. And then, as she said, faded out of contention. And it looked like he had perhaps obviously bounced or, or it was a case of it, it, you know, maybe had picked up something small. But the reason for him sort of coming in a little bit under the radar was because he's been relatively lightly raced this year, Tommy, but by all accounts, he looks a derby contender now. Yeah, but we had, in fairness, we had been talking about him and saying that he looked a stronger dog this year than he had than he did last year. Remember, like there were, there were times during the Laurels when he certainly didn't look like the Laurels winner. He got beaten, I think, in the second, was it the second or third round after leading, I think, or, or certainly even every chance going down to the third bend and getting beaten by a dog that was knocked out in the semi finals. And you're kind of thinking, well, this isn't really a Laurel's dog. But then he improved and got a lovely draw in the final and showed terrific pace in the Laurel's final. He was just on that performance alone, he was he was almost different league, just 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 in, in, in one display. And that kind of that itself, that Laurel's final performance was a, a big step up on what he'd produced previously. And I think we've seen I think we've seen a couple of times during the year this year, even though, as you said, you know, he, you know, he went out of the Easter Cup or whatever. There were a couple of performances along the way over 550 where you thought, you know what, this dog is improving. And it's just a matter of getting it all together and getting it right. 
Uh, Tommy O'Donovan has done a, a brilliant job with him because the, the way he the, he came into he came into the Lawrence a little bit under a cloud and a little bit to prove he had been doing good trials he hadn't been producing the performances in Curry Park and Tommy obviously knew that there was a dog there a top class dog there it was just a matter of trying to get the best out of that dog and did a superb job to manage that like there's, there's an art. There's an art in being able to do that over five rounds and six rounds for the derby or whatever. There's an art in, involved in actually, you know, keeping them in the competition early and peaking them at the right time. It's a difficult thing to do. And only a handful of trainers can do that on a regular basis. Tommy is clearly one of these lads who can do it. He's obviously seen, yes, this is a two round competition, but he's seen from a while out. I think I know what I need to do here to have my best chance of winning the champion stakes. And he's kind of freshened the dog up. And got him to produce two smashing uh, performances. I was like Sarah. We chatted about this the other day, Sarah in Galway, and we, that we both fancied one time only. And I couldn't believe again. And I've talked about it a bit in, in over the last few weeks. The SPs in Shelburne Park are particularly good. If you're, or, or, or the value is definitely there in Shelburne Park. If you're going to be able to be on track, I mean, three to one to me seems like an absolutely monstrous price. Um, I, I, sentimental lad, to me, was a, surpri- a surprising favourite for all that he is a terrific dog. It was a, he's a surprising favourite. He ran his heart out, but like he ran exactly as you, I, Sarah, and a lot of other people looking would have expected Sentimental Lad to run when yeah. he was up against really smart early just, paces. Just, and- just, just an issue on that. Um, with the weather conditions the other evening, umbrellas were up, so I, I couldn't really see the boards, and they were generally, you know, as they would be now. I think there was a situation of industry SPs returned on Saturday night due to the fact that it was on RPG TV, uh, due to the fact that it was on the machine, uh, on, the, on the exchanges. So I don't know what way it, it went in the betting ring, but I assume it was pretty similar to the way it was returned. Uh, are you surprised that Sentimental Lad was as short as he was, Tommy? Personally, myself, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the dog. We've spoken about him on this mm-hmm. podcast for a long, long time. I tipped him up to win one of the major competitions, maybe the Ledger a couple of a year ago was it, or more. Yeah. Um, but I was very surprised that he was went off night four favorite. I, I, I said all week to to the aforementioned Damien Lonigan. I was speaking to Teddy Hegarty myself. We neither of us and none of us really believed that two in a row would set, would start favourite. I, I thought it would be one time only, or perhaps Bach goes buds it. But for sentimental lad to start favourite, there must have been some weight of money. Even on the SPZ, and I'm seeing nine to two, two in a row. Even that seems huge. You know, you know, he didn't win it, whatever. But but that seems a big price. He, he like, was he was over six on the on the exchanges, by the way. That, so yeah, clearly, 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 people made an opinion on him that he couldn't lead the top. Well, I tell you what, we have a lot to, those who punt have a lot to look forward to with the Derby if this is the way it's been for, and, and this isn't the one-off night, we have talked about this in the past, so, but, like, Sentimental Lad is a brilliant dog, and he is, I think I, I compared him to Mal Brandy there a few weeks ago. It's, like, the, the Mal Brandy, the 575 performance, the night Paradise Madison was in the race, was it a night of stars, maybe? I'm not certain, but but he um he's a, a dog who doesn't change pace, but will gallop at a ridiculously good pace for a very, very long time. So when he got, was able to get out in front over 575, or he can do it over 600, I'm sure. So when he gets out in front and he just gallops, you're not going to pick him up. You're just not. He's just he's far too good for that. But over well, in a race like this, like one time only one of Laurels, that's fairly specialist early pace. And, and, and I was kind of thinking, having well, only having led two in a row quite comfortably the previous week, and yes, there's a potential improvement to two in a row. He's, he's a little bit better at the traps than I think he showed in the, in the two nights of the Champion Stakes. But it, ha- having led him and been drawn the exact same way, and as Sarah said earlier on, with four wide seeds in the race, you're thinking that maybe whatever happens along the inside early is going to have a huge impact on the outcome of the race. And I just thought that one time only had shown the signs the previous week that he could do that. I was a little bit surprised that he wasn't maybe a joint favourite, you know, nine to four, five to two max kind of job. But three to one was a huge return. Yeah, it was a big return. The end. Like he was three to one Friday all week. We have to mention that. Um, Sarah, um, Damien, I, I spoke to him a, a few times during the week. He was telling me there was massive money for a number of dogs in the plate final. I, I'm not sure the situation in the Champions Stakes final was. Was there a, a situation where there was money for one dog in the week prior to the competition or to the final? Should I say? Or, you know, were you taken aback a little bit that sentimental lad started favourite? Um, no, not really, because the fact that he had produced. A 29.57 in the opening round with beautiful early pace, let's not forget, as well as a 3.47 sectional, which is actually faster than one time only sectional that he done when winning 
the competition. So I wasn't surprised. No, I mean, the dog had broken the 575 track record, 3059, I think it was. I mean, that's an exceptional performance. And all he has to do is come a few yards back. He's well able to do it over a 550 if he can do it over a 575. So no, I'm not surprised at all. And just on the night, maybe I know the track was marked slow. Maybe the, the, the conditions didn't suit him all that well. And that inside line was just perfect for one time only. And we all know from experience when it's raining on Shelburne Park or probably most tracks, a dog in front is very hard to pick up. And you've got the back kick of the sand as well. Like all these factors have to come into consideration. But to answer your question, no, I don't. I'm not surprised sentimental at his favourite at all. But I am surprised that one time only wasn't shorter. Yeah. I think the three to one was a, a huge price. Let's talk about the race itself. Tommy, one time only racing in trap one, didn't take a flyer, um, nor did many of the others. Droopy's nice one, in contrast, did break fast. But we know that in this company, she is going to be just that yard shy into the opening corner. And that was her downfall. At one time only, went up her inside. She was still a lovely pitch, but she's definitely looking more like she has a W on her back. She looks like a trap six runner. She drifted off the opening corner. And at which point, Bacco's Budsit had made his forward move. He had missed the kick somewhere but was really charging into the corner and he was just in the wrong place as Droopy's nice one took that step right they bumped and all of a sudden one time only finds himself too clear two in a row slips two in second spot and into the back straight my my problem with two in a row the last few weeks is it takes him that few strides to get going into the back straight and um, dogs have quickened away on him from the second bend to the sprint boxes and it was notable the other night that one time only took at least the length off him at this point it's just notable too. Just just on a point that Sarah was making about the about about the section being a bit slower. Yeah, one time only didn't fly out, but like they did rate the track thirty slow as well. So twenty nine sixty seven became a twenty nine thirty seven. So it was back all over the track. But one time only didn't break, and actually was aided by the fact that Drewby's nice one was up in on the outside because he kind of moved off a little bit at the bend and gave Drewby's nice one a bump. As far as I can see, that's the way I make it out. That what happened there, and that, that kind of straightened them. A little bit to get round the bend a couple clear it was as sarah said difficult to come from behind on the track when you have a dog that's doing 29 67 on a wet track uh it's going to be pretty difficult to pick them up two in a row you're writing just those like even those first few yards as well are becoming a little bit of an issue just not flying out because you if you if you have a dog like one time only who didn't didn't take its very best break and you're still giving it a length or a length and a half early you're going to struggle to get around in front of us. It did show terrific pace down to the third end two in a row, but one time only is a seriously good dog. And we've said about it, he's 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 stronger this year. And if you if 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 the proof wasn't in the other night, the performance the other night, then then you know, if you don't believe it, you're never going to believe it because the track was slow and you needed to stay every yard of the of the, of the 550 the other night. So one time only has developed into a potential derby contender without a doubt. I think if the, that that is the proof there in that performance alone, if we haven't already had enough of it. In earlier performances this year, Trubby's nice one. She ran like she, there's there's two ways of looking at the run the other night. One, you'd be encouraged by the fact that she was able to break in that sort of company and be there at the bend in that sort of company, and maybe it'll suit her just to be a tiny bit wider, mm. so that what I mean is she's not going to be susceptible to exactly what happened the other night. A good early pacer up along the inside, giving her a bit of a bump at the bend and, 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 and let, back let, a bit. Let, let's be honest, you know, she's not going to get too many derby heats where there's four wide seats. You know, the, it's going to be in a situation yeah. where it'll be one, two wide seats at most, especially when you consider that they now spread them out. You know, there'll be an equal number of wide seats to a point in, in the heats and then less for the remaining heats. So yeah. she'll have maybe one, maybe two. Like she'll generally get six. You know, like we're, we're expecting her to get trap six more often than not during the derby. Yeah, trap five or six, you'd hope you'd, you'd you'd hope for her. I think she's probably just slightly better, a little bit further out. Um, she like if you'd asked me to be to be to be quite cold about it, I would have said she's probably a couple of lengths shy of Derby winning class. That sort of you know, the, 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 there's a couple of points at the race where I think you might say, okay, she's got to sharpen up here. She's got to be better at this point. She's got to sharpen up a little bit of the boxes. So I was encouraged, even though she was beaten and finished fourth after leading up into the bend. I was encouraged by the fact that she could break as well as she did. So that that would be a plus for me with Droopy's nice one. That would be that would be me thinking, do you know what? She can be more derby heats than I had previously thought. And hence she might be able to go further than I thought in the derby. Um yes, 
she was a little bit outpaced into the bend. And that's probably going to happen in every round of the derby because there's going to be ridiculously good early pace or quality of early pace in the competition. So it's going to get trickier for her. And she's going to depend more on staying on strongly in her races because that's what she can do. But I would come away from that race a little bit encouraged by Drupi's nice one as well, even though even though there's still a little bit more to find to be a derby contender. Yeah, indeed there is. Um, Drupi's nice one. Um, uh, Sarah, we, we've spoken about her at nausea. You know, she's a very, very talented lady. Uh, outside of her, you, you mentioned two in a row. He, he did run a big race in second spot. There's no question about it. And, and you know, I, I'm not as concerned by the first few strides. I don't think that's a problem for me because I've seen him absolutely catapult for boxes. And in the knowledge that he can catapult from boxes, you have to keep him in your, your, your mind because, you know, it gets to a derby final, he's in trap two or three and he absolutely hammers the lids. Well, come and catch me if you can. Like, that's the way it's going to be. But it's just the issue like this occasion where one time only is up his inside and off the second bend, one time only takes that length off him. It's just that little point in the race where he just seems a little bit weak. I, I thought at first it was down the back straight that he was just caught a yard. But I, I actually think it's, it's the momentum he carries into the back straight that's causing him the problem. But that may well come. He's only had what 15 starts now he's won nine times we can't be too critical of a greyhound as you said that was derby favorite for for a long period of time following sustained support so clearly pat kiley and the uh, the ellen moreau syndicate think he's uh, still the superstar that they hope for yeah of course and i remember being in dundalk last year and mickey rooney actually came up to me and he says i have the derby winner for you and i says go on he says two in a row and within a few weeks he was our, our new anti-post favorite he had taken over from swords rex i think it was at the time i can't really remember now but yeah he ran an exceptional race but i i was a little bit i wouldn't say concerned it was too strong a word but in that opening round bocco's budsit was able to take over from him too easy, in my opinion. And the only reason two in a row was able to come back at him off the home straight off the final bend was because Bacos is not the best stayer in the world over that 550 trip. We all know that. That was the so, week before that was the week before the Champions Six, the, the run oh, prior. Sorry, yeah. yeah, the week previous. So I, I was a little bit taken back by that performance. But in saying that, as you say, he only has 15 runs on his card. He was the Derby favourite for one time. People obviously know he has the ability to do it and his connections do. But you also have to remember, he's now stepping up into the, the this company. He's running against the big boys now, and he's still able to do it. Second in a boys' sports champion stakes is a remarkable achievement. So I, I, you can't be critical of him whatsoever. And just as well to touch on that Droopy's nice one. She had gotten the better of him, I think, in one of the rounds of the champ Shelburne Champion 550 from Trap 6. She produced beautiful early pace and done a 29.50. And I had said to Tommy down in Galway, She's one of those dogs that should definitely get to maybe the quarter semi-finals of the Derby. I'm not saying she's going to win it, but she's going to get trapped six more times than she isn't. And that will suit her. That will be in her favour. The same can be said as well for that born warrior. He's going to be getting trapped six more times than not as well. And you have to be keeping an eye on those type of dogs that they'll just keep plugging through. Even if they're not winning, they're going to be qualifying and getting there week after week. But yeah, it was just overall, it was a remarkable final. Delighted for one time only, particularly because I tipped him. I tipped him on Galway Bay FM, TG Carr, and on my Irish Daily Star column. So I'm hoping my followers backed him because it was a great price, three to one, and delighted for Tommy O'Donovan and all the connections. And I tell you, the depth of quality for the Derby this year, this year, I remember talking to you guys on this last year, and we were talking about the depth of quality of bitches. And it turned out then Susie Sapphire won it and sing along, Sally was second. And now this year, it's the depth of quality with the dogs. And it's just, I mean, you've got Hoffa, you've got One Time Only, you've got Vincenzo, you have Hoodoo Brown, you've all these names, all these dogs. It's just, it's it's actually impossible now to pick, I find. If you were to ask me now who's going to win the Boys Sports Irish Grand Union Derby, I haven't a clue. It's wide open. Whereas last year, I was like, Susie Sapphire, Susie Sapphire. Or obviously um, Romeo Magico was my anti post pick last year. I should have bloody backed him for the English Derby because that's where my money should have been. But um, yeah, it's it's very hard. The quality this year is just outstanding. It's going to be one of the best derbies we've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, it sure is, Tommy. Um, you know, you could name them all for for five minutes. There's just dogs everywhere. Um, like even the the dogs that didn't didn't really figure in the final of the Bordsport Champion Stakes. And we've mentioned sentimental lad Tommy. He's beaten two and a quarter lengths. You know, he doesn't do things right in the race. Um, he's 
perhaps the informed greyhound in training at, at present you know week in week he's been absolutely producing for the last sort of five or six weeks now he's broke the track record for for the set five seven five he ran a remarkable race behind explosive boy the week prior to that you know you saw last week's run again saturday night's run he, he's a dog that going into the derby given the fact that he's not going to be against you know five dogs of this caliber you could see him heading into the quarterfinals of the derby easily unbeaten Oh yeah, he's 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 seriously fast. We did, I think we highlighted him first. You were you were kind of on about him in the in the ledger last year at one stage, and at the at the time he was he was lightly raced and a dog that was on the up. Say, but he's um what he's done the last few weeks has been brilliant. There's something there's something about the five seven five doing a track record of five seven five. Something about it that's a little bit special in the sense that you've got to. You've got to do Derby pace, but you've got to you've got to do it for an extra twenty five yards. Effectively, it's really it's really what you have to do. Like it's like it's like I can I can run at that pace, but I can just keep going. Like there's a relentlessness about it. Like that's that's really likable. Like, something it's something a bit special about it. Uh, like he's he's a fabulous dog, and you know, you, you when you're looking at Derby heats, you know, over the next number of weeks, you'll be kind of. Every time he's in a heat, you would be saying to yourself, "You're probably be looking for something that's going to sneak off the front end because he's going to take up quite a bit of the market. You're going to take, you're going to be looking for value in something that's going to going to get off the front and on the race and maybe steal it from him because you know you'll be looking behind and going, or, or maybe looking in front, but looking behind and saying, "Oh, oh, here comes sentimental lad, I'm in trouble." But you'll take a chance because you know he'll take up a good bit of the market in each of the races that he's in because he's that quality. The race itself, um, it didn't go right for him, but he showed like like. They took 30 spots off. So I wouldn't mind the track for him because he's he's a powerful dog. Um, he's only beaten like two and a quarter lengths. You said like Beach Avenue had an absolute nightmare of a run. And it's only both Bacchus Buds it. Talk about the most horrific run. No matter where Bacchus Buds went on Saturday night, there was another dog there trying to be there in front of him. It was you, you beat me to it. It's just one of those runs where you can just put a line through it for Bacchus Buds. We're well, like, we know what he is, we we know how good he is. And again, coming to the quarterfinals of the derby, he's another one that could could well be you know unbeaten in the stake, having set searing gallop to the third bend in the first three rounds, and you know, again, ignore the run the other evening. And as you said, Beach Avenue, it's just one of those races that had happened for one time only. And you know, to a certain extent, two in a row, but thereafter, there wasn't the cleanest of passages for the remainder, despite the fact that it wasn't a messy race, shall we say? Yeah, no, apart from apart from, apart from Bob, it was it. It was like it was like like they, they, they were sent out to mark him. Don't let him get on the ball. God, don't get him. Let him get on the bunny. Just everywhere he went, whether he wanted to go inside, outside. The only, the only bit clear only has when he turned right out of traps, and that was it. But isn't he? Isn't Bacchus Buds it the type of dog? Just the type of dog. That Graham Holland does exceptionally well with, you know, for Derby. A dog with that sort of early pace, he's yeah. a genius at getting them out when need be. And I can guarantee you, for the to be round after round after round of Derby, we'll be going, yeah, Bacchus Butsy led all there. Nice performance. Yeah, yeah. And like that, we could just move it on. You know, yeah, Bacchus Butsy did what he does. He did a 338, uh, 17 seconds to the third bend, one handy by two lengths, having one led by five. And you could nearly sort of, Put, stamp that in for the for the next while. Listen, we'll, we'll move on from the champion stakes, but just a final word on one time only. Sarah, he, he's a big player in the derby. Obviously, Tommy O'Donovan is the right man. Um, Owen McKenna, bred the dog, of course. Uh, champion breeder, as I sent a, a message to him the other evening. I said, you should go back into the breeding paddocks. But uh, it was his birthday over the weekend. He was a very happy chappy, was Owen McKenna. And, and rightly so, uh, Mag's Image. She's a sad loss. I believe they lost her. But uh, they do have the, the sister to Mag's Image at home. So uh, hopefully a continued breeding line from there. Yeah, exactly. And they have obviously Susie Sapphire to look forward to as well, don't they? So she could be the new Mag's Image. We don't know. But yeah, he... But he, um, Owen has an incredible kennel and his breeding line is superb as well. And he's lucky. I mean, we have a, we had a winner in Dundalk on Friday night. I think it was only our second winner of the year. We just have the same four dogs. But when you're looking at all these guys winning everything around them, while you're happy to see them do it, you are a little bit jealous as well, thinking, oh, is that ever going to be me someday? You know, you want another Raccardello in the kennel. When is it going to happen? But look, one time only, a great winner. As well, we have to mention Beach Avenue. What an incredible servant. I mean, they've gotten some spin out of this dog, Pat Healy and the lads from Ashburn. He's just a remarkable servant. He's there all the time. He gets through, he qualifies. It, it would have been great to see him win it. But unfortunately, he just wasn't good enough on the night. He's just, 
he's not as good as he used to be. Like he's what, probably five years of age nearly this, this year. No, he's just, just, just gone four, just gone four. Just he's gone four, four in so June, yeah. He's, he's not as good as he used to be, but a terrific winner and one time only. And um, he'll go well in the Derby. I think though he'd be draw dependent that dog on the Derby. Like he, he'll he need that inside line if he's going to have luck in Shelburne Park for the Derby. But as I mentioned, he is 25 to one from 33 for in the outright. So anyone that fancies him get on each way. Um, I wouldn't put anyone off back in the Manti Post at all. Tommy, Beach Avenue will get plenty of mentions through the Derby. Don't worry about that. I'm sure he's not hanging up his uh, lead just yet. And I have no doubt he'll be you know, there come sort of when the whole field are in action on the same evening in the third round and who knows what might happen thereafter. But one time only, I'm not too concerned by the inside draw from, we always suggest that he would be a trap three dog, certainly around Cartagena Park. And how far is too far out? Maybe four, you know, but I, I think he's one of those dogs. He go up relatively straight from wherever he is. If I, think, if I think he came off a little bit at the bend the other night anyway, and, um, and even when we're going back to the Laurel's final, we were kind of concerned, even though the, the draw, trap one is a great draw, concerned that he would just come off a little bit and there might be a little bit of a bump. And if he could avoid that, he was too quick from boxes to get to for anything else to, get, to give him a bump in the Laurel's final. It wasn't the case the other night. It was just it was just more mature ability in the Champion Stakes final than there was in the Laurel's final. She's just a more mature, stronger dog now. So yeah, I'd be quite happy with two or three. Maybe four now I'd begin to get concerned because again, it's this boring line that I've been using for a while, but it's 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 just the depth, the depth of quality and early pace that's going to be in the derby. It'll it'll if he's out in three, we'll be a bit concerned about how fast the two dogs inside him are. That's a good yeah, quality. Let, 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 let's say he has a part Blake and a good coding up his inside. Then you start to worry yeah, exactly. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, exactly. But but in terms of a ceiling, there is no ceiling for this dog. He's a potential derby champion. Where you know, you can say that for a few dogs, but you know, when it comes down to it, there'll, there'll be dogs you'll go, yeah, I could see this dog in the semi-finals of a derby or a final of a derby, but can't see him win the derby. You could see one time only winning a derby. You could, you, you, you could. It's going, it's going to take a little bit more. It's going to take a little bit more now. Let's, let's be honest about this. A little bit more than it has. But when you have a dog who can win competitions and a trainer who can win competitions with that dog, because they have to click in, in many ways. It, you know, it's, 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 you know, if you swap dogs around the kennels, just randomly swap dogs to different kennels, you might get different results and see different types of dogs because sometimes they just, they just, so some trainers can't, you know, some trainers don't take the dog, dog doesn't take the trainer, whatever else, you know, lots of different factors involved. So when you, when you find it, it's, it's why things often repeat themselves, you know, with, with the likes of him winning, you know, two, two big competitions. Now it's because, Tommy has the key to the dog. The dog is clearly happy and is able to respond to the training he gets. So I wouldn't, I, I, you couldn't possibly rule him out. I think it'll take a little bit more. I think it's, a, it's probably another couple of lengths to kind of step up. But there's nothing to say, that nothing to say with the way he's been running this year that he can't make it. Yeah, no question about it. Um, we 25 to 1, is that what you said, Sarah? 25 to 1 from 33. And let's also mention as well, right, before the Laurels even started last year, Tommy O'Donovan said he was going to win it, but he was, didn't tell anybody with, with, with what dog. So I went, the next time I see him, I must ask him, when you said you were going to win the Laurels, was it with that dog? Because if that's the case, then he could be saying to himself, I'm going to win the Derby this year. And that could be the winner one time only. The well, problem is, there'll be a lot of people saying, telling no himself. saying to himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope he said it to his, <laughs> I hope he said it to his bookmaker. Um, <laughs> right. We'll move on. Well done to one time only to Tommy Dunn. We have to mention, of course, uh, Paul Harrig and John Woodford as well. They're getting some tune out of one time only. And, you know, if he doesn't win anything from here on in, he's already achieved greatness. He's won the laurels and a champion stakes. Not too many greyhounds can claim to have won two majors like that. The seventh race on the card previous to the champion stakes was the champion place. And this was turned into very much a one dog affair. The bold Freddy hit the lids. Paradise Nikki Bell went up strongly. The inside trio didn't take a flyer, but they tried to get involved into the bend, but there was no answer to the early speed of Born Warrior. Tommy, I said in commentary, more more like Born Winner. Uh, he's won now nine from twelve. This was a really taking display. The twenty nine eighty one. I'm ignoring that somewhat. The track the other evening, it was raining. It was stopped. It was wet. It was not so wet. And I think it had stopped a little bit. At this point, it got probably a little bit drier and quicker for the final of the champion stakes. So that 2981, they took 30 off it. I think they could take 40 off it. I think Born Warrior mm -hmm. sort of laid down his cards on the table and said, There you are. There's my derby credentials. I think he's a big player. 
you're trying. You sounds like you're trying to talk yourself into backing us, or else you have backed it. No, I haven't. I've backed um, two dogs, and we'll get to that later on. Right, we have Kulavani Hoffa written down already. Right, we know that much. And and are you going to wax lyrical about him later on? But anyway, Abs- and, and, and rightly uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I suspect that Declan O'Donoghue is on Born Warrior somehow. Yeah, because he's, a, he's a massive him. fan. He is a massive fan. Massive fan. Yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a fellow who, when he's on this, he's on this show. Does he? And he's he's well worth listening to. Declan knows his Shelburne farm inside out, and uh, he has been very keen on 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 Born Warrior for quite some time. Uh, like you only you only have to look at his farm, Kilkenny farm, his, his, the, the the bits and pieces around Shelburne Park. Um, you said his there in in talking about the races, his they couldn't cope with his pace into the bend. Is that what it was? I'd love to see sections into the turn because the early section, and again, I'm not going to tie to this because of the conditions and all that. Three fifty. Um, what can he do? In what can he has a two eleven for five for five two five? He's back in he's April. perhaps not the lightning fast starter that some of the dogs are. But he's sprinting pace into the bend. You know, he, he's got terrific early speed. And more so, he's also an incredible bend runner that keeps a true line. Um, if there's stuff happening on the inside, it won't affect him. He'll keep his line and he will accelerate around the opening corner. Like he goes into the corner just about a length in front. Now there's a little bit of a schmozzle. He enters the back three, maybe four in front. He's six clear by the third. You know, I think it's there for all to see. He's got sensational speed to the third bend. Where he will be vulnerable is if he's not in front at that point, is the run home, especially with the fact that he swings off the final turn. He has a very pronounced uh, run off the final bend where he swings wide, goes to about trap eight, and then stays on up the up the up the line. Like when I say stays on, he's not powering home or anything like it, but he's not stopping either. I think I think I think he's uh, he, yeah he's had four he's run he's run four weeks in a row now. Um, but he had a nice little break before that. Uh, it's interesting what you say, uh, you know, about about him running his line because that's the important bit for as far as I can make out. I think I think we can see the Derby potential in Born Warrior, but the important thing is that he does continue to run that first bend really well because the other night he kind of cut across the bend, but he probably did that because he was just after getting enough clear that there was no dog inside him that there wasn't even there was no real danger. If you watch if you watch it a few times, there's no real danger of actually getting a rub or a belt or a, or, a, or a push off the bend from any any of his rivals. So. Like there's there's a quality about him. There's a quality about him that you think, God, this I don't know where this fella could improve to. You know, we could be talking about him going close to 29 seconds in a couple of weeks' time. I think that that's the type of dog he can be. If he sharpens up a tiny bit at the boxes, there's something really, really likable about him. And he's going to go into a derby with 12 runs under his belt, mm. which is nice in the sense that it's 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 enough experience, but it's not kind of fully exposed that you you definitely think that we're, we're a long way from finding the ceiling of what he's capable of doing yeah uh, Sarah you know there's, there's there's very little not to like about the dog yeah I have fallen in love with him I've mentioned it a good few times in in my column as well I, I really really love the dog and Jennifer O'Donnell as well she's an exceptional young trainer there's the Bally Mac best out of that really good bitch man Taylor Queen and as you alluded to earlier on the nine wins from 12 starts now and that pace he showed down the back straight on Saturday night, it was just beautiful to watch. He opened up a, a, such a large lead to win by seven lengths on a track that, you know, had an awful lot of rain. As you say, you could probably take more off the time. 29.51 is Derby standard, let's not forget as well. But he was a great price. I thought 15 to 8 was actually a little bit even big for him as well. And when you look at, like... It, for a dog like that, for me, it's like, right, what can he do now when he steps? As I mentioned about two in a row, what can they do when they're in against the actual big boys now? But when you go through his card, okay, he finished five and a half lengths behind Kulavani Hoffa there earlier this month, was evens away, didn't really get a good run. 28.02 was a very fast time. But he's also beaten the likes of Bacos Budsit by a length and a half in 28.42 as well. And Bacos Budsit then went on to win the race of champions and was in the final of the Bud Sports Champion Stakes. So, there's a lot, an awful lot to like about this dog. And as we mentioned earlier on, you can't be too critical about two in a row. The same can be said for Vaughan Warrior. There's an awful lot to like about this dog. And he's still learning as well. You could, you could say he's even still a little bit green. So there's more to come from him. And obviously, Dame O'Lonigan likes him as well. And, and the punters, because he's 25 to 1 from 33 to 1 now to win the Board Sports Irish Greyhound Derby. So there is support coming for him. Now, my few cents worth. Um... He hasn't actually really done time as yet. Um, you know, 28.40 is a hell of a run around Shelburne Park. Don't get me wrong. But Derby class Greyhounds on their own will be doing 28.10 better. Um, 
that said, I, I'm he's not one of those dogs I'm too concerned by the clock because you see with your eyes, not with the clock. Um, it's there for all to see. I think the run the other night was very much a career best. And, you know, that's a that's a that's an indication that he's on an upward curve. He's not even he's not even the shortest priced dog in the litter to win the derby. He's the brother to the other Kobe, who's 20 to 1 with yourselves, Boyle Sports. Um, and when Boyle Warrior is very much a wide seed, the other Kobe is the exact opposite. He's very much an inside seed. I think they're two exceptionally fast dogs. Tommy knows how much I think of the other Kobe. It'd be interesting to see how he comes back after his latest exertions. Um, just, I think he's a really good dog. Really, really bright prospect. And, he's- you know, just I know he's in April twenty, but he he's running more like a September sort of a October twenty. He he's a dog that has relatively lightly raced, and I, I still think he's progressing, which is which is a great sign for a dog after twelve starts. Tommy, and he's also he's only had two five fifty runs, so yeah. you know, and that's his trip. So so to say that he hasn't done the time, you're right. He definitely hasn't. We can see from the run the other night and what we've talked about in the last few minutes that that, that the, the run up for the 550, you know, is is definitely what he wants. He needs every bit of that that full length into into the into the first bend. So so I mean we're only seeing we've only seen the tip of the iceberg with him. Yeah. No, a good winner. A deadly, deadly showtime. There was big money for him during the week. There was also big money for the bowl Freddy. Bowl Freddy hit the lids. Just didn't happen from into the corner. Maybe just felt something off the second bend. Seemed to go backwards a bit quicker than he should have. A deadly showtime. Missed the kick. Actually ran pretty determinedly, Tommy, around the opening two bends to go through in second spot. He's a dog you've spoken of uh, at nauseam in, in the past. Uh, that's not his running because he's normally a flying starter. He's a dog that will certainly pop up in the early rounds of the derby on one or two occasions. A dog to keep on side perhaps for heat betting yeah I thought, I thought that will be sharper for it I mean the last I can't remember the last time he, he was 15 to the first bend in any race I mean that's not that's not him at all so I, I, I'd be willing to forgive that forget about it and 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 when I'm considering him in heats to, over the coming weeks I'll be I'll be I'll be you know doing it based on his best form because I think he'll be sharpened up yeah I think it was a good run actually in defeat believe it or not Be despite yeah. the fact he's beaten seven lengths um, Sarah um, looking at, at these as, as a crew, Born Warrior is the one you'd be picking out of the derby. It was won last year by Jack's little thing. Could we see Born Warrior repeating that dose? A dog that finished third in the derby, shall we say, you know? Yeah, I think he can definitely. The only thing I'm concerned about is that he might not just have enough experience under his belt to win a derby. Like, you'd know better than me. Have there been derby winners in the past with... 12, 14 races on his card. Like, I'm sure there uh, had been. But... I'd, I'd, I'd say there's derby winners with less than 12 races when they won the derby. Oh, yeah, I'd say that's a regular. So I know it certainly happened. It. it certainly happened a number of times in the English derby, you know, even in recent times as well. Um, ah, he's, he's more than enough experience. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Yeah, well, the, and the price is good, 25 to 1 as well for a dog that's, as you mentioned, he is progressive. There's more to come from him. And as I mentioned earlier on, he's going to be getting trapped six more times and not in the derby, which is in his favour as well. And he's got that beautiful pace. Once he get, once he hits the sand and from the first bend to the third bend, he's just a joy to watch. And he stays as well. I'm not going to say he's died. It dies a death coming off the last bend. The 550 is his optimum trip. At the moment, he could get better in time, of course. But I just think he is one to, I'm not, I wouldn't say he's going to win the Derby, but I would definitely say he has a huge chance of making the final. And Jennifer O'Donnell, O'Donnell has enough experience as well. And she's flying at the moment, isn't she? She's got a great kennel and she's plenty to be excited about. And um, as you mentioned as well, the other Kobe is too, but Born Warrior, yeah, fantastic winner of uh, the World Sports Champion Plate. And can he do what Jack's little thing done? He sure can. Yeah, he sure can. Uh, before we get back into the race, I just want to mention the auction of the silks. The other evening, Vinnie Grennan was kind enough to put up um, two sets of signed silks for Honeysuckle and Plutard, signed by Rachel Blackmore, Henry de Bromhead, and of course, their respective grooms, John Ferguson and Coleman Comerford. He was hoping to, I, I would say, uh, I'm not putting words into his mouth, but I'd say he was hoping for, you know, four figures, get get into four figures. As it was, um, Cheryl, Cheryl Sutcliffe and Peter Sutcliffe bid 2300 2300 for the silks an incredible figure um well done to barry call the auctioneer in the night well done to everybody that and i know that he had quite a few bids in the book but i think uh cheryl and peter were determined to get their hands on the silks and not only did they get their hands on the silks but they handed back the plutard silks and they got another 600 euro for them um you know peter rang me and said listen you know 
were happy enough. We thought it was just the honeysuckle know. silks. They took the honeysuckle silks and a Plutard went back at another 600 euros. So well done to all involved. I know Vinny wanted to thank everybody for retweets, for liking, for, for putting in bids. Don't forget that the GoFundMe page is still open there for Darlene Lynch, who was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer. You know, it's outside the hall door anything related to the greyhound racing but you know when a young mother picks up something like that you know it really does bring it home so if you have the if you have a moment or two this morning why not click on it and donate a fiver even you know what i mean every little bit counts and well done to all involved especially to vinnie grennan and um, he, he went out of his way to, to get this done he put an awful lot of work in i saw him on racing post tv i saw him speaking you know via twitter to to a lot of people and um he got the word out there and he got a lot of money a lot of money for a very worthwhile cause well done to all involved now let's get back to the racing because i want to mention a few of the dogs on the undercard first thing i'm going to start with the 750 tommy that doesn't surprise you i love the stairs how could you not love the stairs? This was an epic. Magical Poppy pings out. Crafty Kokoro turned second. You knew she was going to show her four bend pace. She got up on the shoulder at the third bend, couldn't get around, had to switch down the back straight, made her move to the fifth bend. But Magical Poppy wasn't finished. Oh, no. She came rallying back. This was an unbelievable run. It was an unbelievable race. And, uh, yeah, it was six bend racing at its best, Tommy. That's exactly what it was. It was a, it was a cracking race. Um, it's kind of what we had taught my Except that maybe the magical puppy might have popped out and made all they both ran their heart out. And maybe and maybe conditions weren't entirely suitable for either, although it was early in the night at least. Um in the sense that it was it was quite testing. So magical puppy, when she was led, you might have thought she was in real trouble crafty Kokoro, having having more uh, four bend form, you might say, Oh, the conditions might be a bit too testing early, even though she is a current current winner. And yet they managed to produce a, a, a race of that quality in 41 45 it was um a joy to watch and i'm not surprised it's probably your favorite probably your favorite race of the night i'd imagine despite the fact there was a champion stakes on and there were a lot of derby contenders running for the rest of the night it, uh, like tim axullis ran a superb race back in third, in third place crafty kokoro she went which she, which she went which to, it deserved sorry. to do which it I, well just Tinox Solis deserved to do it after what happened in the Corn Cullen final. You know, Michael Dever got no yeah. run for his money on that night, no run for the thrill. The other night he would have had a thrill because she ran some race. She ran the crack, she ran the cracker race. It was a brilliant race because because Michael Poppy led then Crafty Coro looked like it was going to go down the outside trying to get get a run going down the back and then switched inside and showed a lovely change of pace to take it up. And then you thought She'll go on now and she'll go a couple of lengths clear because Magical Poppy's done her running. No, no, Magical Poppy came back again and it was just even to the line. I didn't think, I didn't think watching it, watching it that it was a neck, to be honest. I thought it was even tighter than that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, it was it was six bend racing at its best, but in the end, Crafty Kokoro, who is a real superstar, got the got the better of Magical Poppy for the second week running. Although it was considerably closer, if they were to run it again next week, I'm I'm sure I'm sure the betting would be a little bit tighter. Magical Poppy four to sixty other nights, Crafty Kokoro nine to four, but I wouldn't suggest that it would be the same results. Like these two could could met could meet ten times, it could finish five all. Yeah, no, it was a remarkable race. And to be honest, I have never been a huge fan of the 750. Right, uh, well, now, no, no, sorry, no, we'll stop you there then. No, you're, you're, cut her, cut her off, cut her off. Yeah, I've said this to you before, like, I, 600 is probably my favourite distance, to be honest. Well, probably, well, apart from the Derby, obviously, a 550. But I've never really loved the 750, and I have fallen in love with it. In the last year, I could say, and then watching that on Saturday night has really made me now. I'm like, I absolutely, when I see a 750 on the card now, I'm like, yes, let's do it. Even before I wouldn't even tip anything in it in, in the paper, I'd actually bypass the 750 because I was never really good at the form of the, those six Ben dogs either. But Magical Poppy, oh my God, she's like, Crafty Kokoro was just stalking her. She just wouldn't go away. She was just on her tail. She's like, I'm going to get you. I'm coming. And then when she hit the front, I was, you'd, you'd expect her to just move away then. But the magic poppy was like, no, I'm not having any of this. Like, And to, the, the, as I agree with the finish, like it looked a hell of a lot closer than a neck. It was a thrilling race. And with the conditions, the way that they were to produce a 41-45, considering the coin to Cullen was one in 41-30, it was an exceptional race. But when Magical Poppy broke, I thought that was it because we've obviously seen her when she hits the front like that. She's she done 4108 in the what was it, the semi-final of the Corn Cucullum. And that was a remarkable performance. And then I was disappointed that she didn't actually win the final then. But 
like hats off to Crafty Kokoro and the Dibleys. She's a remarkable bitch. And I think you did say in commentary as well, her four bend form really came into it. And I just think, as you say, if they've had 10 meetings, yeah, they would. It'd be nip and tuck between them the whole time. And that's brilliant for this distance, like the six bend contest. We just have two fantastic bitches buckling it out, and it's exactly what you want to see. It makes it exciting that you don't have the same dolls winning all the time and, you know, running away with it. And, and you want to see a tight buckle. That's what we go racing for. We want to be able to talk about it. People will be in the Magical Poppy camp. Other people be in the Crafty Kokoro camp. That's what it's all about. And the breeding end of it as well. It's exciting that they go on and have puppies, and we don't know what that's going to produce down the road. So it's all it's good for racing. It's good for the Gilfoyles, good for the Dibley, good for everyone involved, and it's just fantastic for racing. Yeah, I, I don't know when they'll meet again. Um, perhaps it'll be in 550 yards in the Derby. I'd imagine both will go down the Derby route. Tommy Crafty yeah. Coral certainly fast enough. She has the engine to come from behind the fastest dogs in training. Magical Poppy, the way she's popping out of traps and she's very strong, she could certainly also go around her too. Um, I just want to mention Flying Honours, 25 to 1, back and forth. He won the 900 at Dundalk on uh, Dundalk International Night. I thought he ran a remarkable race. He was right on top of them to the escape. Um, worth keeping in mind for the 850, perhaps, and Derby final night or you know night of stars that sort of road and Shelburne Marathon is clearly one is clearly in his mind I know a few people did try to buy him after Dundalk race he's clearly not for sale I think he's a very very exciting uh, ultra marathon stare for the future perhaps um, we will see him in action um, hopefully there'll be a 900 on um, at Dundalk on bar one sprint final it'd be great to see him in action um, on to Shelburne Park's fourth race the Imelda Morn happy 70th birthday open 550 Tommy or I'll start with actually yourself, uh, Sarah, here. Um, it, it was three big guns, Park Lake, Good Cody, and Coolavani Hoffa, three exceptionally fast greyhounds. Like, they were joined by the likes of Deadly Destroyer, Drooby's Next One, and Ballymore Border, and yet they were all very fancy prices given the quality of the dogs they were taking on and the respect of draws. Um, Park Lake ran his heart out from the front, but Coolavani Hoffa, he's looking more and more the real deal, um, you know, he, he was denied a run around the first two bends at Park Lake, who just drifted off to hold him up a little bit, but got racing into the third bend, took it up and, you know, got that length, but then had to dig in because Park Lake was coming back at him. It's as far as Kula Vanny Hoffa wants to go. It's as far as Park Lake wants to go. Good Cody is only beaten a half length remarkably afterwards, which is an incredible run also. But these are three fast greyhounds. You know, like it's, it's very easy to say that these three greyhounds could go further. You know, these could be first, second and third in the derby. That's how good they are. Yeah, no, Kulavani Hoffa, that was a remarkable performance, but also from Park Blake, there was only half a length at the finish, 29.56. But I was talking to actually Declan Kells and his son Kevin Kells, they were down in Killarney when we were down there, and they obviously closely involved with Michael O'Donovan, and they obviously think a hell of a lot of this dog, but like he was in the juvenile final, wasn't he? The Greyhound and Petworth juvenile final in Tralee, and he ran in a couple of rounds of the... Kirby, but then we didn't see him. I think he had a bit, a bit of a break then, and then came back and won. Was he four wins in a row now in Shelburne Park? Yep. And those times: twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty eight, ten, twenty eight, oh two. Then goes to the five fifty and goes twenty nine fifty six. He's progressing all the time. Um, I was talking to Damo as well. I don't think we cut him for the Derby. He was already short enough. And um, he was twelve to one from fourteen to one earlier this month, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. But he is twelve to one. He's very, very short in my opinion. And when you kind of compare him to Born Warrior, who obviously Hoffa has beaten, Born Warrior is 25 to 1 and Hoffa is only 12 to 1. Like, there's a massive gap when there's probably not that much between them on paper. What you're saying what you're saying is you'd like to be on cool of any Hoffa 25 to 1 and 33 to 1. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I think Hoffa is too short. That's But obviously, there's an awful lot of support coming for him and that's why Damo has to have him as short as he has him. But... Tommy's rubbing his head there because he knows what I'm at. Um, Tommy, I don't know what you're at, though. Cool, cool of any Hoffa, um, you know, it's it's out there. I'm on. Okay, I'm on at thirty three to one and twenty five to one. I'm more than happy with my oh, okay. uh, my my piece of business. Park Blake in second spot. I think he's looking more and more the dog we we were hoping he would be this year. I thought it was a remarkable run again the other evening. I think his last two or three runs have suggested that he's now found the form that he found at the back end of last year. The 28.05 around Cork beating Croker Spirit seven lengths was a massive run. It didn't happen for him in the semi-finals in Champions League. You completely forgive him for that. But the other night, it was a big, big run and defeat. 
It was a huge run. Um, yeah, I was <laughs> when I saw the, the the run in Cork, I was thinking the Laurels because um, I think he might just come up short in the Derby, but it was a big run. But I'd be more encouraged by Kulavani Hoffa, even though I'm not on a 33 to 1 in. Um, reason being, he got a couple of bumps, and for a dog who wouldn't be a very strong stayer, um, you you could be, he could easily have been discouraged coming out of the second bend, having to work hard. They now they like it wasn't they weren't hefty bumps, but two or three times they kind of came together. And it, he could easily have, have, have kind of said, ah, look, at, it's yours. You have the inside line. You just keep it, Par Blake. But he, he still showed that determination to get to the third bend in front. And even though Par Blake was coming back at him, good Cody was flying. And Druby's next one was showing absolutely ridiculous pace. I know they're tying up in front, but the pace that Druby's next one showed into the escape was was, was phenomenal altogether. But anyway, um, the front three, as you said, because they have that early pace, even though good Cody didn't show it the other night necessarily, the other two showed terrific early pace and were showing Derby class, I think, to, to well, the whole way around, to be quite honest about it. I think I would be encouraged by Kulavani Hoffa. I still think he needs to tighten things up, but then again, that probably applies to every dog who, who has any aspiration to win a derby. They probably need to tighten things up and just be absolutely cherry ripe or 100% for, for the next six weeks or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, my only concern is that you're going to now tell me you're on Tully's surname as well. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm on, I'm on good Cody, okay. actually. I'm on good Cody. Oh, good Cody. I, I, okay, I, okay, I, not too bad. I, I'm on a good prices and good Cody as well. I, I thought it was a remarkable run in the international. I thought it was a big run the other evening. Obviously, obviously, we know he can start much better, but he's going to need to do it more consistently. But he's definitely, like, they, they made the right decision this year, skipping the sprint. He's not a sprinter anymore. He's looking more and more a real sort of 550-yard greyhound. And when he does sharpen up with those boxes, and the fact that he's now going to be in those boxes for the next number of weeks, you'd imagine that that sharpness will sort of come. I think he's an exceptionally fast greyhound. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're the two dogs I've backed for the for the derby. Um, let's mention Tudlik surname um, because he is very, very exciting. And um, This was his Shelburne Park debut. He had trial there in 2806 and 2799. Not a bad couple of spins. Um, he's a big 84-pounder, but he showed guts. He showed track craft. He showed real class and when the gap opened up off the second bend he showed a real turn of speed Tommy Tully's surname is looking you know more and more the, the real deal Pat Buckley thinks the world of him you can see why I thought it was a remarkable run by the second dog stories cash out he is going to need to sharpen up early he's looking more of a 550 575 yard greyhound but there's no question he has a massive massive engine you can ignore Velasco he completely missed the kick he's all about early speed I think he's a very talented tracker too but Tully's surname Tommy took the headlines he did the right thing by running him over five to five yards as well, this close to the derby. Um, don't think there was any point in really going into a five fifty at this stage. I you would you would have a small concern that he might be um draw dependent. A little uh, bit, yeah. Def- yeah. yeah, definitely wants to go inside, and um that would be my only concern because I think if you look at the next race, the the, the sixth race, they took 30 spots off for 550. They didn't take anything off uh Tullick's for his 28, 26, which you know. Maybe conditions deteriorated rather quickly, but I suggest that they probably thought G28, 26, that's a big run, but it probably was. It was probably I, better I, than that. My take on things was it was 20 slow for the first few races that weren't races, and it was probably slower than the 30 for some of the races that they did race. But I genuinely think if you looked at the racing in reality, it was probably something like that. You know, it was it was yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. Yeah. all over the shop. Like there was a couple of races where they were skating around and you could have been well, 60 slow. Do you know what I mean? On a, on, a, on a small bit of a tangent, I think it's good that they do they do actually make the effort to to uh, to rate races individually rather than going yeah the whole night was thirty because yeah. you can see that elsewhere that happens a lot and it's no good to anybody and it means dogs end up in wrong grades and then you have mismatches and all that sort of stuff. So if the effort is made to do that properly, it has a benefit in the racing. Now when they're when they're doing twenty eight twenty six, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> because they're open class anyway. Yeah, well, he's going to be yeah, AAO or he's going to be AAO. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> eight, yeah. eight, eight from eight, not a bad return. Sarah, what, what's, what, what's, what, where's Tully's surname at the Derby betting? Has there been a nibble? Um, he's 14 to 1 from 20 to 1 earlier this month. So he, Damo's just left him at 14 to 1 after that performance the other night. Um, 28 26, incredible. What is it? Eight from eight. That's yeah, it's, it's, he won seven from seven in Tralee, wasn't it? And then won the Lee Strand final. But then we didn't see him for a while, I don't think. So for him to come out and do that in Shelburne Park on a wet night, that's a hell of a performance. Um, but again, like, I just for a dog like that, that we actually probably know very little about in Shelburne Park, is what I mean, coming up to the Derby. 
14 to 1 is too short. Like, I, I just can't back dogs like that, anti post. I just can't. It's just like, I think he's far too short. I really do. I'm not saying yeah. he could go and win it and I'd be eating my words, but he just needs a little bit more experience now for me, especially yeah. over 550 as well and against the, the big dogs in the Derby. Um, and he's draw dependent as well. So there's probably a little bit, a few factors going against him uh, to win a Derby. So 14 to 1, too short. He is the type of dog, Tony, that people will want to latch onto, not at 14 to 1, because he he is the he's still the, the not surprise element, like it's the wrong term, but the progressive dog. People like to back, they don't want to back second season dogs. You know, nobody has any interest really in, in generally backing second season dogs. You know, I know I've backed one and I'm happy to do so, but they generally want something that we think is still more to come from. And that's totally surname. I think like you can back Kulvani Hoff at 16s, you can back Tulik's surname at 14s. And, uh, and that's not to say that, that that one will win and the other one won't. But like you've got you've got a proven dog. The points here makes it good, you know, it's, it's the price is too short. But but like like the the the, the Lee Strand is the only open class A3 in the country. And and you've also got then the um, you've also got the um twenty the two runs at 2806 and the 2799. And then you've got the backed up by a 28-26. And I what what will be key is the first round of the derby. The draw he gets will obviously is because of that, that is a consideration as well. So you could get a bad draw. Yeah, we, we do, we do, we do have to touch upon the fact that he still qualifies for the juvenile derby. They may decide to skip the derby. Now, I assume, given his talent and ability, I think if you have a dog with eight starts and he's a September, I think you take your chance in the derby. But as you if, said, Tommy, if, if he draws trap two in the first round, pops out and does a 29 20, you know, that 14 to one, God, I wish it was on. <laughs> yeah, that's and, true. And that, and that won't and that won't be a surprise if that happens because I think that twenty eight twenty six is a lot better than twenty eight twenty six personally. Yeah. I think it might even be borderline sub twenty eight seconds. And even even though like he's a, he if you're if you're a bookmaker he's quite a difficult one to price because you you know you you probably if you're in Ted Hegarty in this world you probably err on the side of 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 here I'll take a chance if you know what I mean and say say look at this dog hasn't the experience he can't win you'll take a strong opinion and you, uh, understanding that you can be wrong. With any strong opinion, you can't you can't be wrong. Um but there's no surprise if he's if he's eight to one after the first round, and he's clear favourite, despite the fact that we've got ridiculous depth of quality in the in the competition. Yeah. Because even though there will still be like if you, if we picked out six dogs each, right? I said these are our idea of the six finalists, you wouldn't back any dog at 12 to one now to win it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just to end this point, can I just can I just reel off the, the names, right? Balnabula Ed, 10 to 1 favourite. Mm. Swords Rex, Kulavani Hoffa, two in a row. Vincenzo, Kulavani Calvin, Tulik Suriname, Explosive Boy, um, Good Cody, Kil- Kildare, the 28.05 in a trial the other night. Uh, Romeo Magico, the English Derby champions at 20 to 1. Like there's, I'm after naming 10, 12 dogs in front of them. The other Kobe, Part Blake, Sentimental Lad, um, another Holiday who, who remains unbeaten. Whether he'll go in the Derby, I don't know, 550 yards. Uh, the Bull Freddy. Bocco's Buds at one time only, Born Warrior, Drupi's next one, Mustang Jet, Magical Kuba, Drupi's Got It, Drupi's Nice One, Raha Mofo, Hoodoo Brown, We Can Dream, who we haven't seen much of since he won the mm. Juvenile Classic. Um, you know, he trialed well at Shelburne Park the night, Bocco's Vieira, Drupi's Glass, Tully Raven, a track record holder. Okay, he's a lightly race. Drupi's Edison is a, is a dog we, we've sort of forgotten about a bit, but if he turns up and let's say he trials in Shelburne Park at 2820 next week, you know, I could see his price having. Um, you know, I just keep going down. Did these showtime Serene Ace? And it was Serene Ace. I can't see running in a derby. You know, even dogs the one the other night, Flaming Money Bags, Bocco's Leah, they're at 50 to 1. Like, it's just, I could just go on and on and on. Like, this derby is going to be absolutely unmissable. The strength, as you said, Tommy, in depth in the country at the moment is second to none. I don't think it's ever been better. And it all leads to just the most incredible derby. Sarah, you're going to be a busy woman. You know, I, I, you're 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 like myself. You're prone to the odds of pearls. Of you might actually run out in the next few weeks. I probably bloody will, and I'll be saying that about because <laughs> I ran out of superlatives. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I tell you what, we make a pact, right? Instead of superlatives, we just go straight to expletives, right? We start, <laughs> effing, we'll start effing and blinding and go, this is effing <laughs> unbelievable, all right? Can you imagine, we a load of stars with the type and coming up on Twitter. Um, no, it is. It's going to be an incredible derby. And I know we say that every year, but it really is. You've just named, what, the top 20 in the betting and it's like mouthwatering. I, I, I think I named about the top 30 and like, I could have kept going. 
you know? yeah it's 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 remarkable and as tommy touched on tulla graven is is a, probably a or tulla surname is a hard dog to price it's going to be a, just an overall hard anti-post market to, to to price because there's just so much quality at the moment and actually what price is um sing along sally to win the derby she's not even got to her i didn't even get to her Where she must she? be 50s or 66s then if you haven't even because she's not yeah, sally. you got to 50s and there was no mention of her she's 50 to one wow she, that's a huge price for her, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just looking down there. It likes a barefoot supremo as the dog could keep qualifying. It'd be great to see him back in the track. And yeah, like there's some really yeah. fast greyhounds. Like hello three. Hammond. Hello Hammond, who was clear to the escape in English Derby final at 66 to 1. Now I don't think I'll be back on the winning English Art of the Derby, but at 66 to 1, I'd certainly be tempted. Skywalker Barry is 66 to 1. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's 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 actually crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff. Listen, let's 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 save that. We have a lot of derby chat to come in the few weeks to come. Uh, I just want to briefly mention the action from Dundalk the other night. You know, it's hard to it's hard to fathom that we still have this wonderful sprint competition going on up in Dundalk, and it was very much a normal service resumed for Serene Ace twenty ninety six again. He really is looking the part up there, but yes, he's only three spots faster than Sean Cole Johnny, who only won by three parts of length from Ross Dan. Both of them running exceptionally well running to Shea, I thought running a big, big race to win from where he was into the opening corner. Fantasy Jesse, a good second after drifting off and finding traffic and Hawkfield, those are 2104. It's a cracking sprint competition, but Serene Ace is three from three. He's after going under 21 seconds three times in a row. Sarah, you know Dundalk, you know Dundalk very well. Anything going under 21 seconds could run to do it. Three weeks running is pretty special. It is pretty special. I mean, I watched that race from Saturday night and he ran away from his rivals. He wouldn't have thought that that was the third round of, of the sprint. Do you know, like 2096 to win by seven lengths. And even the ones that he was beating, like Droopy's Gravy and Flashing Willow. Like Flashing Willow, we know what he can do. Yeah, so no, he did. He did stumble at traps. We have to put that on on, on, on Flashing Willow. Like he yeah, actually he ran a big that. race to qualify. I think even if he hadn't, I think Serena, it was just all over once he once he came out of the traps. It was almost like you could, it's like where he was that far in front when he hit the ground. It's, you were looking for him. Is, it, is, is that him in front? Like it, it was just unnatural how easy it was. As soon as those traps come open, he's just gone. And it's an absolute joy to watch. I love the 400 distance. I absolutely love it. Obviously, that's what we run our dogs over now as well. I, I love the trip. I wish I had a dog that could do 2096. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Serena is absolutely brilliant. Um, Another dog in it, that... Um, Adam Dumford, didn't he have a treble the week before? Is, is two his two weeks. He's, he's, had, he's had two trebles in the first two rounds, and then um, he only had the one winner the other night, but he also had he also had uh, the qualifier in the form of Fantasy Jesse, and no, Fantasy Reese went out. So he still has two in it, Tommy. You know more about Adam Dumford. He's down your part of the world, isn't he? Yeah, it runs, it runs dogs in Yall, all right? All these dogs that he had run in, in, in Dundalk have, have had, had their runs around Yall as well. Um, so nice to see that form standing up a bit too. But um, I feel Ian, there's one, there are a few more superlatives left because you're going to mention the unraised steak from Friday night, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, better, <laughs> yeah, better mention it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, the, the bar ones. Friend continues this weekend um, an incredible competition again Serene Ace will, will take the world of beating but things are starting to get tightened uh, up but um, yeah I just want to give a mention to that resets unraced stake at Shelburne Park on Saturday night you know when you see an unraced stake an open unraced stake at Shelburne Park certainly worth any sort of money you have to pay attention because so many superstars have appeared at Shelburne Park and I know Kilkenny and Clamell and Tralee have been mentioned for the unraced stakes throughout the years and, and rightly so when you consider the dogs that have come out of them but if you look at some of the dogs that have emerged from unraced stakes at Shelburne Park, you know, it's it's quite frightening, you know what I mean? Like so many derby winners, so many classic winners. And um, on Friday night, the resets open on race semi-finals took center stage. There were some brilliant performances in the opening round, but on um on Friday night, I just want to mention here comes Sid who who won his open his who won the opening semi-final. He was fourth into the corner behind Crossfield Linda, Gary Vojo, and Bally Mac Bronze, three of which are you know were one of the most promising dogs in the opening round. Here comes Sid that caught the ice third to Trinity Jr. in the opening round. He took off down the back straight. He absolutely took off. You know, he comes around the outside of those dogs. Gary Vojo, who I think is a very, very bright young prospect, uh, a son of Jalingo, a half-brother to Wolf. Okay, he's in August 20, but another one from the Pat Maloney conveyor belt, Tommy. You know all about it. Mm. He looks an exciting tracker. He did a lot of running to get to the front. He couldn't hold. Here comes Sid. Went on to win in 28-13. It was just a 
blistering run by a greyhound that clearly has a massive, massive future. Um, Mert Lahey trains him. And um, the lads, uh, the lady and the the lady and the Sid syndicate. Um, he's another son of Droopy Sydney, who we, who we failed to mention at five winners at Shelton Park on Saturday night, including the three that we spoke of at length: Grafty Kikoro, uh, Kulavani Hoffa, and a certain one time only. And here comes Sid. Was the you know, previous night at the star for him. And then the second heat went to Trinity Jr., who again looked a really exciting young tracker as well. I thought Ben's Teddy, another son of Droop Sydney, ran a remarkable race in second also. It's an exceptional on race stake, and that final will dominate Friday night's action at Shelburne Park. And just don't be surprised if a superstar or two, or perhaps even three, emerge from that competition. And um, did you catch up on them, Tommy? Did you see here comes Sid? I did. I watched, I watched it because I had read your PC and you're talking about it and raving about it. So I said I better watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was encouraged by by Gary Vogue, Joe as well. Um, I watched obviously with, with the Maloney connection below in Castle Mark or just uh, in Gary Vogue actually. Uh, only up the road from Yall and they run most of their dogs in Yall. And Jalingo has been a brilliant bitch for them, a, a brew bitch. I think she's had she's had over a hundred individual winner or a hundred winner wins, you know, wow. and most yeah, of them yeah. obviously around around Yall. So so like there's, there's Great quality there, but I did because you went on about it. here comes Sid, and it was it was impressive. It was impressive. You like that type of dog, the stay in the strong stay in dog that might even you know maybe excel o- over further d- down the line. Oh, I, um, I, th- I don't get me wrong. I think he'll go better. I, I don't. I don't think he's going to be a one-two yeah, pony. Yeah, yeah. I think he'll be a real five fifty yard challenge into the corner and then take off down the back straight dog. Yeah, yeah. I look at it. He's, he's had two runs. We're not going. We're not going. We're not going to say this is what he is. You know, and that's and, and that's all. But like, like I, I was reading what you what you wrote about the other day, and I thought, you I have to watch this race now again. To see, just see just how good it was because I don't think you get too excited about them that much, even when they're when they're that young, like you know, and rave too much about them at that stage. Um. So yeah, he was impressive. I'd be, I'd be dying to see what happens next with him. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, Sarah, did you manage to see either either he's or you were no, too busy? Know. You were too busy dancing. Like, you were busy dancing. No, that dancing was Saturday night. Friday night to the racing started late, so I was flat out on TV and radio and all sorts. So um, no, I didn't get a chance, but I will watch them. But judging from what you're saying, it was very very impressive. So I'll be, the, the, I'm here the, comes into my notebook. The life, the life of a high flyer, Tommy. Huh? The life of a high flyer. Well, that's it from. Well, we know. I know that's it from talking dogs. Uh, this Monday, of course, we'll be back soon. I think we might be taking a little break, but um, I don't know what you're going to be doing, Tommy. And I know what I'm going to be doing today and get a bit of work done now. And I, I'm heading out for the afternoon with the kids. But uh, I'm sure Sarah, I like given the week or two she's had, she, she's going to be stuck for something to do. I'd say she could be reporting mm-hmm. from the freezer aisle in, uh, in Tesco or something like that going, uh, yeah, I fancy <laughs> loop-de-loops or, or maybe a Cornetto, but the Magnum's an unbelievable run by them as well. So yeah, don't be surprised if Sarah pops up on your uh, social media feed today selling selling uh, an ice popper. What is your ice popper choice, Sarah? Ooh. A, ma- a classic Magnum. Or the brownie Ben and Jerry's, or an iceburger, depending on my mood. I have to tell you, you got me with the last choice. I'm an iceburger man, Tommy. What about you? <laughs> I'm just hoping this is sympathetically ends as <laughs> best of luck, best of luck, Don. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope it's untouched. Right, listen. Tommy looks like a Calippo man. I don't know what this now. We'll move on from that quickly. Right. <laughs> don't even know what that means. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> We're done. We're done on this Monday morning. We're all clearly a little bit delirious after the bank holiday weekend. I hope you've had a great weekend. It was hard not to be impressed by the racing we saw on the track. And of course, with the derby around the corner, it's time to start studying the form because we are set for one of the best derbies in living memory. Have no fear of that. My thanks again to Sarah Kinsella, who added so much glamour to this morning's podcast. Tommy, who added even more to the podcast. You're very welcome indeed. We'll see you next time. Good luck and God bless. (laughs) 